Hello and welcome back to our video, let's play video blogcast thing. I'm AWAC. I'm Gamma Dev. And uh, we are continuing on, continuing through Monster Manor. Um, we're going to do level four. I don't know that we'll have time for level five because uh, I don't want these to go over an hour, but uh, we'll see how this works. Uh, I'll get to this eventually. I'm actually writing a uh, plugin for. I'm going to skip past this. <laughs> We've seen that plenty enough. Um, I'm actually writing a plugin for the GIMP to load uh, cell files, uh, and once I have that up, then I'll be able to like you know do like insets of original artwork and stuff. Um, so I have like the the f the first pieces of the parts are working. Now I have to uh, decode the pixels. Uh -huh. So which and it turns out that's like complicated because there are so many different pixel formats. I think. <laughs> I some point I have someplace I have a GIMP plugin for for all the M2 stuff. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah. Fantastic. Uh, you can put in some. <laughs> put, 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 put that one up. Put one up. Put, yeah. Put that one up on the web. So let's see. Yeah, so let's, let's see. What do we got here? Yeah. Hey, does your try loading that blank slot there? Because I think you saved to your blank slot. Did you actually save? Uh, well, let's, let's I see. Think, you... I think I did, but I I, I saved to both of those yeah, slots. Yeah. So I just I'm just kind of curious. All right. Let's if, see what uh, happens. Oh, someone didn't check for a zero string. When <laughs> well, I mean, I think part of the ah, yep. Okay, so okay, so this isn't this isn't the wait. I think it is. Hang on. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Yes. So we will be. Um... So, so when you patch it later, this game later, you huh. check for the user has actually entered an actual <laughs> save name slot. And look uh, at your first and spider. Here's the first spider. So the trick to these is so, to get them in a narrow hallway. So, yeah, this is one of those. Come on, jump. There. So they can only attack when they jump, right? That's correct. But their but jump is quick enough. I mean, in the years ago, I was quick enough that I could get them when they were at distance, but not anymore. So I have uh, to wait for them to walk up to me. Um, they don't really. Oh God! Here we go. Come on. Come on down here. Here we go. How much has it gotten before? Ah, okay. <laughs> so you can kind of see how this is going to go. So, real high. Now, see, it's unusual that you made an enemy that kind of highlights the fact that you can't look up or down. <laughs> <laughs> or aim well, up and down, because normally you okay. don't need to. Oh, like... Okay, so Wolfenstein, you couldn't look up and down. Right, oh no. Doom, okay. you couldn't look up and down. Right. Marathon, you could, but not very well. Yes, but you auto aimed up and down in those, all those games. Really? Yeah, so if you had like a guy on a high ledge, like you know, in Doom, even uh -huh. because because again, the game is there is no real height in that game. It's all right. map, as far as the map, internal map is concerned, everything is existing at one height. It doesn't bother to check okay. height, except for rendering. It does a little uh, illusion. Okay. But so if you fired something that's up on a ledge, shooting down at you, it just just goes to that height because there's mm -hmm. only one height on the map. I see. Okay. So, oh, so this, this little texture it's, here, it's a little. Um, unremarkable uh, I actually somebody posted a link on Facebook to 3DO's first CES summer CES and in there there's about five seconds of footage from the prototype version of Monster Manor and it had this wall this texture. was the only wallpaper that was the only, only we had time for one wallpaper one monster oh hello uh, oh you could hit that <laughs> Ah, oh, stop laughing. Ah, jeez. Yeah, so you get an idea. Ah, okay, so they start attached to the ceiling. So let's get rid of the ghost. Um, this is the only of uh, uh, exception to the, um, uh, what is it, the um, ravenous bug bladder beast of trawl rule. Uh, spiders activate on proximity, no matter how far away. Ah, ah, yeah, see, see. So we see here it is. Okay, let's get down here. So we have to come down here. Come on. Jump. Oh. Nope. Good. And the last time I tried playing this, I ran out of ammo. So. Okay, so now this guy. Are you still on the ceiling? Oh, shit. Where are you? Ah, damn it. Come down here. 
Come on, come on. So yeah, so this, this is gonna be you know creepy, you know, slow. Come on, come on. There you go. All right. So you know, you're, it's possible you're just that your reaction time is different. It's yeah. I think I think I've slowed down over the years. No, no, no. I'm thinking because all right. So this is what happens when you play um, an old system mm -hmm. on a modern TV. It's got to upscale it. So you might be losing like a frame or two of uh, if you don't have this. A, you have to have it on game mode, and B, you have to have a game mode on your TV that actually supports the concept of, oh, I don't want to spend any time upscaling this. I want to uh -huh. do it within a single video frame. I, do I have this set to game mode? I hope ah. so. And some of them like, can't even, they won't bother to do it with something like composite or something. Mm. I mean, but, because uh, you have some you have to set only like a specific input works, or you have to name the input PC. There's a whole bunch of little tricks. But oh. this is something where it's like, depending on the platform, uh, People say it's like, wow, it's like my reactions have really slowed down on HD set. It's like, mm, no, it's your HD set that's trying to be do more processing. I've wondered about that. You know, with modern sets, it says, oh, I'm doing lots of processing, yeah. and I'm but I'm delaying the audio too, so it's okay. No, it's no, not no, okay. No, it's not because you're, you're unfortunately your input is not a, is delayed. So, <laughs> well, it is well because you're reacting to the video and you're seeing that. Because mm -hmm. so a lot of people, it's like they'll, you know, they'll say, they'll curse like. Uh, lag, they'll, they'll blame their controller, they'll blame, mm -hmm. you know, you're using a hardware controller, wireless controller or something, and it's like, mm, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why it's like, you know, depending on, uh, and sometimes the consoles themselves will introduce lag by, you know, if they have to upscale uh, to another resolution. Mm -hmm. So, like, like this. Well, it's a, well, I mean, a console that introduces lag on its own, I mean, that one Presumably, yeah. they have facilities for uh, compensating for that. Well, or well, or say a console that can't upscale. So ideally, mm -hmm. if you set your, you want to set your console to match your TV, so that the mm -hmm. TV is not doing ja or your worse your receiver, because uh -huh. then you got two levels of indirection. Oh, you got Lord. the receiver doing something uh, to it, and it's like, oh, well, it's okay. I've, I've matched the audio delay output in the receiver. It's like, no, 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 no. So it's like, yeah, for an old console, you want to plug directly to the TV. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people like to go through these video upscalers because it makes it look nice. It's like, yes, right. but it also takes time to do that. And, yeah. Unless it's really expensive, which most people you know, don't. Uh -huh. you know, oh, I mean, their TV's really expensive? Or? Well, well, the upscaler is really expensive. They I think do not introduce lag. But usually it's like they go for image quality, which usually takes more time because they do like, with, you know. Mm -hmm. Like when you record this, if you record like ATI, this thing called, you know, video soap. And it's like, well, it's really great because it gets a few frames and then it says oh you know this is jitter this is interlace it deinterlaces them and all that great stuff mm -hmm. but of course that takes more frames to do all that stuff right right so now you're getting that's why i thought it was too loud okay well i like I, yeah, okay. well i well, yeah, i know but i don't yeah i don't want to come over the room mike um so all right so the the what you ideally want to do with the spiders is get them at range because they drop off the ceiling pause uh -huh. And then you can nail them. Um, but as I said earlier, I, I, I have to review the code to make sure, but um, I believe the spiders activate on proximity no matter how many walls are between you and the spider. So it's just like a straight, you know, distance calculation. So are all the wallpapers a single size? Uh, yes, I believe they're all... So you um, don't do any um, level of detail stuff, like for far away you use a, a smaller one just... No, no, there were, we temporal did, aliasing. And... No, we didn't do any uh, LOD stuff, um, which in retrospect probably was a mistake, because I could have eked out some more frames per second if I'd done that. Hmm. Yeah, it's already smoother than than most first-person shooters on the, the 3DS. <laughs> um, no, the first the first time I became concretely aware of people doing LOD stuff on 3DO was when it was um, what the hell was it? Road Rash. Road Rash, yeah. Uh, which they did to, to pretty good effect. Um, but yeah, this is... Um, yeah, I mean, as, you, as you may remember, this is a source-based renderer, as they called it. Oops. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, so it just, regardless of how many pixels actually end up on the screen, it always traverses all the source pixels. Oh, hello. Okay. Go for the distance shot. Go. Well, yeah, he has to jump. Is the thing. 
Oh, oh, who's that? Probably Stabby Stabby McGhost here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming around? Or, no. no, it's back behind the player. Is that scream supposed to be your scream? No, that's not me. That's no, 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 no. I mean, oh, like, the, the player, player scream. Yes. Yeah. There's got a bit of a girly voice. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Gotcha. Uh, I finish it with a lens flare. <laughs> <laughs> Again with the lens flare. Um, yeah, that was like a brand new thing. In, um, oh, yeah. Uh, is it, is it, isn't all the SIGGRAPH papers that just come out on the uh, recent, about 1993? Or? Uh, probably. Yeah. Like, how did it... Yeah, I remember there's a big deal that they put artificial lens flares in, uh, what was the movie at the time? Hook. Oh. Like for Tinkerbell and stuff. They put all these, like... Uh, ah, okay. They'd had a, you know... And then I think the, the guy who wrote the, the plug-in then, like, turned around and sold it. I think his name was John Knoll, who later like, he did, like, all the... He was, like, the effects supervisor on all the Star Wars prequels and stuff. Oh. But he... And I think he then monetized the plug-in and turned... You know, made a crap ton of money before somebody decided to, you know, just mm -hmm. build it into every everything on the planet. Every renderer. But yes. It's like, you know, hey, look, we can get a Spielberg look without having to... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, make no, it look just, like it was shot li like it was shot live action by putting something you normally try to avoid getting into a camera. <laughs> yeah, it was because like for decades everyone said avoid lens flare, avoid lens flare, and then, and then like, oh no, it's stylish. And then Steven Spielberg loved to use it in all his films, and then right, and then of course now it's got a resurgence with Mr. J.J. Abrams. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. You know, like Star Trek, if you saw the lens Star flare, Trek, yeah. where it's just like, how do you see anything on the bridge? All these damn flares in your eyes. <laughs> oh. It's eating me. Oh, Jesus. He, he toned it down, I think, after. after I think he realized like Star Trek was probably the best, uh, or the end of that road as far as his aesthetic. Although he did it in Super 8 as well, but, but then again, right. he was also making, quote, a period Spielberg movie, so right. it should look like Close Encounters with all the lens flares and stuff. Oh, crap. <laughs> Oh, uh, crap. Jeez, uh, which way should I go? Uh, I don't know, towards uh, health, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's... Not checking your corners, man. Okay, yeah. There You're walking go. backwards into a room. I mean, okay, for every book... Well, that's good for some enemies in your game, mm -hmm. since you know... Well, well, see, your I, style already, of see, I, already, I already messed up on this once, so I kind of know where I'm going to get gazumped, but... Uh, so you so you know how to play you've played this all the way at beginning to end, obviously. Um, but, well, have you played at beginning to end or have you just played individual levels? I have levels? played every level, well, but I have not played it yeah. beginning to end, so it's kind of a Well so that was what I was gonna ask you, is like because um, you said you were burned out after making this. That happens to everybody after a game. They're uh -huh. usually burned out by it and they don't want to see it again or touch it again for right. some amount of time. Mm -hmm. So how long after that though could you actually go back and play it objectively? Wow. And actually, like, either enjoy it or go, what was I thinking? Or, or... <laughs> and play it objective. Um, uh, well, at least um, in this particular, in the, in the instant case, 20 years? I don't know. Because uh, that goes back to, like, you know, making a sequel. Because, mm -hmm. like, the best time to make a sequel to a game mm -hmm. is literally right after you finish the game. Because yeah. everybody's, you know. It's kind of got, fresh with ideas. You've got and... the pipeline down. you got the tools oh, down. Ah. Oh, did that, that, do you have a hook shot? Did that thing seek you? No. They shoot straight, huh? Yes. And, okay, it does look kind of like... Because, yeah, it's like, which, you know, unfortunately most dev teams do not want to make a, a sequel immediately afterwards. They want to go to Hawaii for a few weeks and yeah. decompress and all that stuff. Yeah, I agree. But it's like, that's the absolute best time to do it, and... It's kind of interesting nowadays we have the concept of DLC, you know. Oh, like, Lord. Matt, well, but I know people bemoan it saying it's like, oh, that should have been on the disc in the first place. Well, as a game developer, I can tell you, no, it was not going to be on the disc in the first place. Or if it is on the disc in the first really... place, it wasn't finished. Uh huh. Not ready to go. But they might know, like, eh, we're going to use these assets eventually, but we just don't have any time to code for it. So that's sometimes why it ends up on the disc. But most times it's like, no, it's not really ready to go because by the time a, before a game hits the store shelves, it pretty much has been done for two months. Mm hmm. No, so, I believe that. Because you got to go through, you know, manufacturing. You got to submit it to the console makers. And right. All that I mean, great yeah. Stuff. Go through their content approval or, process or whatever. And the before it is. goes to them, you have to set it through your own oh. content approval process. Like, how you did know, that happen? What? Oh. 
Well, wait. Stefan, is, that, is, the other, is the other side of the wall actually a fully lit room? Uh, oh, that's a good question. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, every cube. So here we're kind of looking at a cube. Um, every cube has two possible um, artwork faces: the north-south faces and the east-west faces. Mm -hmm. So this. So the other side of this wall may be red. Uh, red wallpaper and I assume they're all pre-lit or whatever they're all pre-lit yeah there's no there's not really you're just tinting I? the cells though you're not actually that's, that's not a different piece of artwork right um I there's th just because the 3do you could do that they had that wonderful right the you know, pimpulator I believe is what uh, Dave Neal called it yeah pixel process manipulation pipeline right to darken or lighten the cells right you could do a you can actually call it's right you can also do you can actually blend to like it was you can actually do color lightning couldn't you on the you could which uh, I I know a lot of games had well not a few games had used it um, and you know Disruptor was actually one that saw that used it really well mm -hmm. um, had these wonderful colored fogs and you know like brown fog and everything mm -hmm. and I remember there were some games like um, Starfighter when they went to port it to other platforms uh -huh. they couldn't do that that same kind of blend to a color and so it ended up looking like the PlayStation I think can only darken they can't lighten ah okay. There's, yes, some, there's you, some weird thing like that. It was, um, and yeah, so there, it, it ended up looking like really, really bad when they poured it. <laughs> yeah, no, there was, a, there was a lot of flexibility in... Uh, okay, is there anybody behind this door? Yes. Uh, there was a lot of flexibility in the, uh, the cell engine on that sort of thing. It was a little weird the way they did the math. The math. Oh, hello. Come on. Come on. So, uh, and so, but the way it worked, it was something like you had three bits of resolution on the multiplier, um, and ba basically what you got was you could like multiply by some anywhere between point one two five one eighth up to like th three, and then you got a shift by shift back by three, so a divide by eight. Come on. Is there anybody around here that I forgot? So, so, so by using those um, two uh, parameters, you know the, the 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 you know the the numerator and the denominator, you could uh, adjust the brightness of pixels. You could also do um, multiplication. You could also do transparency in much the same way. Ah, shit! All right, where are you? Come, come here. He's hitting the wall. He just doesn't realize it. There we go. Yeah, that, that made it very uh, flexible because, like, you know, transparency. I remember, like, with Saturn, you had to have like screen door transparency for most things, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, which basically is just like just alternate, don't draw alternate all, pixels were yeah. on and off, and yeah, yeah, which a lot more. of arcade games had to do up until well, mm -hmm. they got blending hardware like, yep, three years like this guy, yeah, and then. All right, let's... Oh, yes. right, so now. Back over here. Need more ammo. Yes, there was some back. There was some back here. But uh, yeah, it's like so. Yeah, so like immediately after this, you like didn't want to make a, a follow up, but they did. They eventually. So studio was formed by this time. Yes, studio. Studio was formed um, while this game was under development, and I'm just going to waste the extra five. Um, this is after. Yeah, so, so trip comes up and says we're just going to do the console we're never going to do software never going to do software never going to do software oh by the way here's studio 3do yeah uh we're doing software and, you know which is you know not too much of a surprise because you know he founded ea and so you know he, he that's what he does um but it was you know kind of cheesy of him to do that after the fact after he promised you know a bunch of developers oh so, they so is around. he wait? Is the boss ever the spider ever a boss? Spider is never a boss. Yeah, that would make sense. Because you know, because they're just too it's hard. Sick. Well, yeah. yeah, they're already they're hard enough as they are. Let's see, Let's switch up there. Let's see, yeah. If I were gonna do a sequel, yeah. I would say, yeah, this is kind of a cheap <laughs> character in sense of uh, mm -hmm. hitting you. Um, <laughs> it's like you know. If I could just tilt my, my gun, I could hit him. And... I think the... I can't remember if the original one didn't jump. I think, like, early in development... 
I don't know who it was who said, oh, they're too easy. Because I'd like <laughs> to punch him. But <laughs> yeah, well. Like, I could I mean, I, it's one of those things about, like, yes, you can have a, a character that's really tough to kill. Mm -hmm. But here it's like, it's almost just highlighting a fact of, like, you can't look up or down. Uh. And I would, if I was going to do this in, like, a modern game, what you usually would have is, like, the character has a shield of some kind and his weak spot is only exposed at a certain point in time. Uh. So it's not as. It's not basically you're you're it's the same mechanic, the same, you know, enemy mm. attack, the same outcome, but it's like it doesn't it gives that illusion to them that you know, there's not some limitation in your control scheme or something. Hmm. You talisman. Yes. Exit. Basically all you need to know. It's like <laughs> I looked down that hallway. Alright, all right, so let's find this door. Yeah, uh, yeah, so like so I mean Killing time was in production for a long time. Yes, it was. I think, they, I think they had that going for a year and a half. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like, well, let's make a bigger and better, you know, first-person shooter. There was stuff. there was some um, two aspects to it. He jumps to the side sometimes. Two aspects to killing time, as I understand it. I, again, I wasn't on that team, but uh, Kim was, and so I've heard a few stories. Part of the technology they leveraged to make that work was... Um, some of the maze stuff in Jurassic Park Interactive. Right. Uh, which was more general case than this. Yeah, I, I remember that. A lot of people loved that section in Jurassic Park. Probably the only section they loved at Jurassic Park Interactive. <laughs> Apart from the mini arcade games. And, yeah, and you go back to, well, but of course you didn't have any weapons in that game. It was just basically run from room to room and avoid the raptors. And avoid the raptor, which is chasing you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and it, it did. It had... Uh, you know, you can look up and down, or not that you there was any reason to. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, ah, ah damn it. See behind you. that would be a spider. <laughs> Hi there. Oh, he <laughs> jumped across. Hi there. Uh, that Jurassic Park Interactive was funny because that was under development at the same time this was, and so every so often um, a weekly disc would show up, like a gold. Master, well, not really a master, but uh, hello. Um, it would show up, and we, we'd uh, we'd look at it. Now, Jurassic Park Interactive was supposed to be the flagship product, right? And so, I'm, but I'm looking at these, and it was supposed to ship the same time ours was, which was you know before Christmas '93. And I looked at some of these dailies coming, da I'm calling them dailies, but they didn't come out that often. Um, is there anything over here? Nope. Uh, and they were just, they were like really poor. I'm going, what's going on here? They've got a bigger budget than we do. They've got more people than we do. And it's looking pretty awful. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Movie license, maybe? Um, <laughs> well, okay. So that was, some, I think that was something else that that was going on there which was they got the license to the movie but they didn't get the license to any of the actors who were in it right so they had to like very judiciously which, which was like that was pretty much common at the time that video games were con still considered kind of uh ghetto uh-huh so it was i remember um when it was like a big deal that they um they got the likeness to use james bond or one of the, uh, Pierce Brosnan in one of the later James Bond games after GoldenEye they didn't have the oh, they really? didn't have the rights to use the likenesses until uh, after GoldenEye it was probably because GoldenEye was a, a huge hit uh -huh. that somebody said hey there's a page well also because the budgets also went up on games after GoldenEye GoldenEye uh -huh. was still a tiny team but then Monster hit and then suddenly people started throwing money at it mm -hmm. and then do you have enough money to actually pay the actor just to use their likeness forget about reading lines that was even later it was just like, here, we'll get a sound alike, and then we'll, but we can use their face, you know. <laughs> so, hooray! So yeah, I remember Jurassic Park Interactive. Uh, Les Hedger is actually two of the characters that you <laughs> see in the not voice. I don't know if he did voice work on that, uh, but he's actually uh, the body double for the little bits of live action they shot for mm -hmm. uh, Nedry and Hammond. That makes sense. Which is uh, uh, Les was a big guy. Yeah, and. Yeah, it's kind of funny, but Les is, is weird because I knew him as a programmer mm -hmm. before I knew he did voice work. Oh. Because, he, well, he worked at that one company with us. Um, 
Okay. Post uh, post 3DO. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, and he was doing uh, programming, and then one you know it's like one you know one day he's not around, and it's like uh, oh where's Les today? It's like oh he had a voice he had a voiceover session or he had a commercials something you know, which is really weird um, because. <laughs> Like he was, I remember he was like shooting a, a James. Weird, okay, weird connection again. He was shooting a James Bond commercial. Huh. For the idea was, and was the idea it's like, you're James Bond, and so they had like all these people dressed up in tuxedos as James Bond, and he was one of them. <laughs> and like he came up with the joke, it's like they're all like in a huddle, and he goes, "What are you guys doing?" The director goes, "What are you guys doing?" He goes, "We're bonding, don't you?" Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> but yeah, and then. Then later again, he did um, voice work for a another game I'd worked on, mm -hmm. where I, and I was I had literally probably listened to his his lines of dialogue thousands of times, uh -huh. um, because I was doing the the lip sync pipeline, you know, uh -huh. the game to end. So I had to process the audio file and do the animation and crunch it into the game and test it and link it up to the game logic and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So I'd heard his voice, you know, thousands of times, and it wasn't until I was looking at what Les had done in voice work. I was like, "Hey, I worked on that game. He was that character. I never knew it because he did, he did, you know, hundreds of lines of dialogue." And I like, I had to listen to him over and over again as uh -huh. you do during game development. That's speaking of like getting sick of something. Oh, um, I've I've heard stories of people at um, Skywalker Sound. Uh, a friend of mine was like working in the office opposite a guy who was trying to edit a particular sound effect in and the effect was a crying baby uh -huh. so it's so so like uh, 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 okay but it wasn't just that it was thank god for digital nowadays yeah, yeah. no i i yeah i've had that problem too where i've sat next to somebody who's had to do screams for an m-rated game um and it was like okay and literally like Sometimes it God, was literally three. one day, uh -huh. whole day was a single scream that I would hear over and over and over again. And I tell people, you know, um, if you want to get a nice soundproof office, mm -hmm. work on the audio pipeline in an M-rated game. <laughs> Your neighbors will insist you have a soundproof office. <laughs> Because they don't want to hear the constant swearing and explosions and gunshots and stabbings and all that stuff. So, stabby. here come the stab. Yeah, yeah. The audio people are like the most unpopular people on a team if they don't have their they own. They don't office. have their own soundproof office. Yes, yes because <laughs> it's like because a lot of times nowadays you can't work with headphones because you have to be able to hear it in surround. Mm -hmm. You have to have a stereo system, and you have to have its volume up. Where it's like, you know, mm -hmm. which you can imagine is not not the most pleasant thing to work next to. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah. So, yeah. So this. <laughs> Anybody else in here? But yeah. So Jurassic Park Interactive is like, yeah, you could see where it's like, you know, let's make a bunch of mini games and string them together and show off the thing. Since we can't get the actors, we can only get a little bit of footage from the movie footage that the movie. doesn't. That doesn't have any of the actors in it right. because we can't afford no. to pay the actors. Right, not recognizable in any way. Yeah. So we have to have you know body doubles. So that means basically they're just running away from the camera all the time right. or off in the distance. Oh, and there's another person I work with uh, uh, mm -hmm. as a uh, engineer. Right. Was one of the kids in Jurassic Park Interactive. Oh. <laughs> running away from the camera. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like. And I asked him, I was like, well, how the heck did you get this? Like, you know, basically it was just like one night they quickly needed somebody. Uh -huh. It was a night shoot, I guess. It's like, oh. Because he was like 10 at the time. Mm -hmm. No child labor laws, I guess. Since he wasn't a member of like any union or anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was just like, here, get a video camera. Go shoot some stuff. It's like, okay. <laughs> Let's pretend the California woods are Hawaii. Yeah, you know? it's like, <laughs> yeah they have eucalypti and... Uh, am I going to... But, you know, it's like, oh, it's like it's, oh you're out of the I'm right, out. Dude. It's like the early days of, well, it's like what, you know, YouTube is, tube has kind of turned into anybody can make a movie. And back in the, those days, not everybody can make a movie, but, you know, video mm -hmm. game companies at least had, they had equipment, not much of a budget. Uh -huh. So it's like they had the, the makings of like early, you know, independent video, which is like, well, we can afford the, we can afford the cameras, we can afford, you know, everything but talent. So <laughs> we'll supply the talent and uh, yeah, just run around and yeah. Well, I mean, 
Oh, let's read some live action stuff. <laughs> oh, hello. I remember, well, that was another thing that make, took Killing Time a long time to make, was they did uh, their monsters as live action. Yes, they actually were pretty inventive about it, too. Yeah. Um, they, like, set up, uh, what was it? Wait, was there something in there? There's probably something in there. I don't know. Uh, they set up um, these treadmills that the actors would, like, walk along. So they were, so they were, so it wasn't... Uh, so they're actually like moving in motion so they can actually get proper motion capture. I remember seeing the test original test footage for the um, the clown that goes tickle tickle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like. I mean that was yeah, that was pretty. I mean they took the you know, I think you were this was like the first uh, F -F first person shooter to have uh, transparent uh, ghosts and they took it one further in having yeah. transparent FMV ghosts, full motion video ghosts where it's like you had the you know, you'd walk up there and you see the little vignette of like, guys, we're gonna stash it around. You know, the, mm -hmm. the plot point ghosts that we could... right. Yeah. <laughs> There's no place to put all the ammo. We'll just put in crates around the Everywhere. mansion. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. At least they justify it versus right. sort of like, you know, replace like. What wow. do I pay you for? Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. Don't bother me. I have a party. It's like, why would you leave all these wonderful, valuable weapons and ammo just around for people to come up so they can use them to kill you with them? You know. <laughs> That's a really poorly thought out evil hideout. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, but it was like it was very ambitious that that game. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, and you know, innovative a bunch of ways. Like it's basically it's an open world game. There's no load screens in that game. You know, it's just, yes. you can just stream from one uh, section of the game to another as long as the door is open. You can go anywhere, anytime, and no loads. No apparent loads. I remember when they they ported it to the PC. They you, yeah. you you just basically hit a trigger plane. The camera would freeze. Right. It and would you... vaguely put the camera mm -hmm. sort of in the same place. It right. Just freeze the game, put it in the same place, but most of the time not. So you have this weird out weird jump. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, I just hit a load spot. I mean, kind of like what Half Life does, where it's just like they just pause right. the game while yeah. they load it up. You're, you're in an airlock now. So, yeah. yeah. But it was like yeah, in Killing Time, it's all just. Smooth backgrounds, streaming. You didn't, you wouldn't know, you know, that it was doing all that stuff in the background uh -oh. until you pop the disc out. Mm. Must go faster. Who's attacking me? You got a spider behind my ass? No. Yeah. Did you back into some health? Or did he drop health? No, he doesn't drop it. Nobody drops health. Nobody drops mm -hmm. anything. Um, no, there might have been a health behind me, but um, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, I think yep, this is the. Is. I think this is the musical track I do use for Halloween. Is this level? It's uh -huh. like, so what do we got? Uh, 20 apiece. Don't be greedy. Just go through the damn portal. <laughs> Just go to, of course, would you really want to go through that portal? I'm looking at that thing. This is like the portal of hell. This is like, okay, well, this looks like a comforting place I want to go. <laughs> Don't rest now or your quest could end in monstrous failure. Press on. Only a chilling death can stop you now. Okay, thanks, Les. So, let me... What are we at? Okay, so it's 34 minutes. Come uh, on, you can do it. You think so? You if, think you don't, so? if you don't lollygag with... The, you know, you're allowed to run past enemies, you know. It's like, <laughs> I realize they will, they will still come after you, but still. Your game has been saved. Thy quest is over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, all right. Go let's, for it, come on. Right, let's see. Chant, chant. Oh, is this the one? Is this the hey, one? Whack. Hey, whack! Hey, <laughs> ah, ah, new textures. New yeah. textures. <laughs> yes. Um, this I think was one of the first ones that uh, actually one of the first maps that was made after the prototype. Um, and if we actually go to the map here, get an idea. Hmm. I, I think um, Stefan did this. Is what we call a turkey shoot because yeah. <laughs> and those are those flickering uh, animated wall textures uh, yeah the, in uh, fact yeah this is just another example of what uh, the artists did with uh, the stuff that they asked for so you've got yeah. uh, the burning pyre up there um, interesting so unfortunately you can't have treasure or, or basically that pyre hanging there represents one item on the map and so that so so you can't have like 
treasure there at okay. the same time. So there's like a couple of uh, halls that show up where you hear ding, 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 ding as you're picking up treasure, and then a skip as you walk under the uh, well, it's, uh, the pyre. Makes sense. Oh, hey. oh. Yeah. oh, too far away. Oops. He's shooting. Again. Hang on. Oh. Oh, now I shot again. So I, can't, I don't want to shoot his shots. <laughs> Uh, for example, right here, you see the pyre and listen to the pattern. So you can also see it. I mean, yes. But, yeah, I mean that's what's well, that's legit. I mean, yeah, no, pitfall I'm does not, the same trick. I'm not complaining. <laughs> the same I'm, space. Just, I'm just pointing it out. You know, it's like the sorts of things that you. Uh, yeah. Well, so you made it. so this is like one of the first levels you made. This is. This is one of the earlier ones because yeah. I remember these textures showing up very early on. Yeah. Um, and. I wish I could remember who did these. I think Stefan might have done these as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this became one of my favorites because they did such a lovely job with this. Of course, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like the old lull them into a false sense. Like here, two treasures, and then hello, monster, in the next yeah, one. Uh -huh. You get used to doing that. So ah. Mighty Morphin Powerhead. Okay. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, thank you, math error. So uh, it's, yeah, so it's. But this this also shows how the perspective foreshortening right. isn't really there. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting when 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 you make a game, it's usually best to like make your um, your first level last. Just because. You mean the first level in the game? Uh, the first physical level of the game, yeah, last, because mm -hmm. by that point you've sort of gotten it, everything down in terms of your pipeline, your work process, and everything. Right. And, and, and your sense of where the difficulties lie and how to yeah. tune that first level. So it's like, it yeah. goes back to the, you know, you never get a second chance to make a, a first ah. impression. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, and I work on games like that where we've accidentally made the first level last, and it's like, oh, that was such a godsend, where it's like, because hmm. usually a, a lot... Like for rookie products, a lot of people will tend to make the first level first. It's like, well, of course, this is my right, and you get very ambitious, and you end up end up like using stuff that you end up realizing not going to work. You end up throwing away later, and it just gets to be like a huge bloated mess. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, I need to go back and redo it, or you're left with something where it's like, what was I thinking? I was still inexperienced. So it's like usually most people like nowadays figure out like if you make the middle of the game first. Mm -hmm. It usually represents a nice cross section of like what your game is going to be in terms of like all the problems because everything's been introduced, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, like all the enemies are present, all the the game mechanics are present, and then it's like, oh, okay. And then you go back to the first one. It's like, well, what would be a nice gentle introduction to my game, mm -hmm. but still show off a whole bunch of stuff, right? You know? And I remember like one game worked on where it was like they realized they needed a tutorial level, mm -hmm. and then. So like our our level designer was so good at our tools by that point, he literally knocked it out like in like two weeks tops. Nice. And everybody who played the game was like it was their favorite level of the game because it's like the tutorial. Oh. Yeah, and it, oh. which is kind of funny because like it looks nothing like the rest of the game. Uh huh. Because um, it's supposed to be like this virtual reality like training center or whatever. And it's oh, like, right. And he mm -hmm. just figured out it's like oh if I just you know take all the textures off all our, our regular objects and make them semi-transparent and just overlay a grid on top of them. We'll think it's like, oh, it looks like a sort of like a hologram or something. And and Oops. then the world is really simple because it's just you know, checkerboard blocks and building lines. People's like, oh, it's like Tron and everything. And they're like ooing and eyeing. And it's like, yeah, it was like the quickest thing we could do. <sighs> but, you know, you're so good at it at that point. It's like, mm -hmm. ah, you know. So it's like, yeah, make... And that's and also like that's why it's also the best time to do like DLC because it's like well now I know you know mm -hmm. now, now I don't like if, bang in case you quickly. didn't like the ending to our game here's a uh -huh. better uh -huh. ending. Here, here's another example of a transparent um, wall right so so yeah that's just like purely decorative it's just really but yeah we we didn't really have t a lot of time to do this and. It's, I just want to get to level well, 10, because I love to complain about that one. I think it's level 10. So were any levels cut from the game? Um, or just, like, repurposed? I don't know that any were cut exactly, because, again, because we had so little time that we really couldn't afford to throw stuff away. Huh. 
I mean, you had like monsters that you. Oh no, we never had monsters that we threw because again, because we had very little time. Uh, I would have liked to have had more because we o we only ended up with four. Hello. Um. Um. And so we end up reusing them across twelve levels, right? Which, you know, kind of gets stale relatively quickly. Uh, but. Um, well, even in modern games, it's like you'll see like a lot of enemies, but they're basically the same enemies with like slightly different models or mm -hmm. different, even just different textures. Oops. But they have basically the same behavior, but just maybe different tune settings on it. Tuning settings, not, not, right? Not like tune tune. Uh, <laughs> but it was you know, not only would have required more art, but it would well, yeah, it would have required more art, but it would also would have required more code, right? Um, because each each of them has slightly different behavior. I mean. The uh, pathfinding code, first of all, there isn't any. <laughs> Just basically make a beeline. Oh, there's a wall. Oh, yep. damn, I can't get through this wall, but I'm going to keep trying anyway. Okay. Here, oh, now here's an example of um, it can see you because it's transparent, so it's active. It's trying to get to me, but it's I'm not going to get not going to get through the grating. Can you, but, can you shoot through the grating? Uh, no. Mm. I tried that earlier. Don don don. Version 2.0. <laughs> Oh, pick that up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's like because, uh, like, going back to Killing Time, it's like you know they, they, that game feels very bloated. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's got some impressive it's, sense, but it's like you know, it's like how many different types of pistol do you really need? Oh, okay, you know, and yeah. it's sort of like they have a lot of weapons and it's nice, but a lot of them are just like, well, you know, these aren't effective. So you end up using like maybe two or three mm -hmm. weapons. Unless you absolutely just run out of ammo, and that's what like what you're stuck with, because it's like, well, why would I want to use this crappy ass pistol when I got the machine gun? You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I find that's true with uh, even modern games. Well, that's, yeah, <laughs> I mean, but sometimes it's like you know, um, like say like a uh, like a Halo or something. You will definitely use different weapons for different enemies. They almost mm -hmm. try and make like an it's kind of like a rock paper scissors kind of thing, where it's like certain enemies will use certain weapons mm -hmm. that you can take out much easier with certain types of weapons. Or if you're playing like multiplayer, for instance, you like, you know, certain things work better. It's like, well, this map sniper rifles. Mm -hmm. This map, well, sniper rifles going to get me killed because there's no, you know, they're all long distance. It's all yeah. close quarters, so right. you know, they're all charging at you at the same time. Or it was like, yeah, killing time was like, you know. It's like, yes, all their art look, looked awesome. I mean, they spent enough time on it. It should look awesome. Um, mm -hmm. They had really nice detailed textures. Then it's like, you know, and the architecture ah, was, ha, ah, yes. Shit. Architecture was very nice. But it's like, at the end of the day, it was like, wow, the frame rate is really low. It, they was, they it was unfortunate. You know, they were impressed with their own design a lot. And it sort of like, mm -hmm. you know, and it sort of got, tended to get away in the, ga in, in the way of gameplay a bit. Are they? Oh, I see. They're kind of stuck. Ah. Have you played um, Slayer? You know Slayer? I don't know. It's don't uh, know. it was another. This is probably. I think it's like probably the next first person shooter to show up for the three D O. There's this cube base as well, but they have full floor and ceiling and ah, different heights okay. to the rooms and everything. But you can tell it's very cube based. Mm -hmm. And it's it's got the D and D license. So oh. ultimately, when you're shooting stuff, so they got. You know, a crap ton of stuff you can pick up and stats mm -hmm. and stuff. But ultimately, when you're hitting guys, it's all you know dice rolls. It's like they tell you like the rule set they're using. Mm -hmm. You know, before uh, before reference. you know, Bioware made the, it uh, you know more mainstream to have D and D games. Uh, you know, Slayer was was mm -hmm. out, um, and it was very, and it, its unique feature was uh, the dungeons are all randomly generated. Oh, so but you could trade them because they you fed them a seed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's using a pseudo-random number generator with a C generator. Oh, that's right. Oh, I dimly remember that. Yeah. And uh, it's actually it's actually really good, at, although the fact because it's randomly num random generated dungeons. Yeah. It's basically, here's the dungeon. Mm -hmm. There's an end boss. Like, there's like one of three end bosses. Like, mm -hmm. giant dragon, giant gold, you know, that kind of stuff. And so But it's no, it's, you know, basically it's just, it's yeah. literally a dungeon crawl. It's like hmm. one, you know, one... <laughs> Here's your seed. Here's your dungeon. Yeah, crawl through it, and it's very good. I mean, the textures look great. It doesn't run as high a frame rate as this mm -hmm. because you know it's got floor it's and ceiling. Too much to do. Yeah, yeah. but it, it has nice variable height rooms. But you can tell, like I said, they're you can tell they're based on cubes, but they hide it very well. 
Okay, where's the... Oh, there's the door. <laughs> Extra guy. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right, so here's here's the uh, ammo that I was worried about. All right, but, guys. Uh, and then they did a, they did a, they actually did a sequel, Death Keep, which was mm-hmm. uh, not based on cubes, obviously, and had these really, really elaborate dungeons, mm-hmm. and actually had a full-blown story. Not very hard. But a lot of people didn't like it because, again, they had a an interesting choice for their first level, which was, let's set, because it has a full narrative and mm-hmm. everything, that the first level of the game is an ice cave. And so your slips, and they modeled, like Pio, they modeled your oh. movement physics, so you're constantly... Sliding and Your first level, yeah. Things, it's like, that would have been great. off of stuff? Would, yes. Like, oh, well, no. Let's go off a cliff. Ah. Um, and yeah, and that one, that definitely was a full 3D game, because they had these wonderful vertical dungeons, where it's like, you would work your way up, but you could still see, like, the layers below, like, these rocky, like, suspended in midair, kind of like rocky cliffs and mm-hmm. stuff. And you could see, like, all the way down, <laughs> and you could fall, and if you had the proper, you know, ring of... Un, you know, whatever light unleavenedness or whatever. Feather you fall. You, feather, there you go. Yes, probably. I'm guessing you played D and D in your day. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. You could actually just fall straight through, and it's like, wow, they kept them all loaded, and you could you know, go from layer to layer. What? It looks great. <laughs> what the just the layout? Eye? Yeah, that's, that's. I think I'm pretty sure this is like yeah. one of Stefan's earlier ma- earlier maps. Um, yeah. Looks like an Indian rug, kind of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, I think Sl- you know, Slayer and Deathkeeper are like two of my favorite first-person shooters on the 3DS. That they're, you know, the, the second one is very deep, and the first one is just like, oh, it's cool, you know, it's random dungeons. You don't like this dungeon? Nah, yeah, I don't like this dungeon. No, generate me a, roll me a new one. You know? mm-hmm. oh, I think I know where this goes. And they they got a ton of enemies. They're not as detailed or well animated as these, but mm-hmm. they're, you know, it's they're straight out of D and D, you know, so. So, Even though I'm not a D&D player, I thought, oh, that's So they nice. could actually call things Rust Monsters. And, yes, it yeah. was an official license game. You had the, I think you even had the, I can't remember, did you have the Gelatinous Cube or not? <laughs> His favorite. <laughs> yeah, I remember when Rogue was um, uh, out for Unix systems and yes. um, TSR got wind of it. And they said, no, you can't, you can't call it. Rust monsters, and so they had to like change all the names of all the monsters. The monster of tarnishing, or something like uh, that. No, they called it an aquator. Oh, dude. Yes. Okay. What have What have I missed? Yeah, I mean, I think Slayer. Oh, I, 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 I mean, yeah, Slayer was, and it was an early '94 game. Hmm. Because I remember playing it a lot. You know. Uh, I don't remember if, you, if they let oh. you look up. Oh, or, okay. If they let you look up or down or not, or they did. I mean, they definitely yep, the camera would move up and down. But I think it was like just at the start of the level. It's like, look, ceilings, and they would just uh-huh. pan down. <laughs> we have ceilings, people. Well, honestly, we have the technology. We won't be using it very much, but yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, then Deathkeep was like I said a lot, lot more. Uh, Slayer was a 3D exclusive. I don't remember if Deathkeep was as well. So what was the one? Where you're like in this mech suit fighting these aliens and Space close... Hulk. Space Hulk, all right. Yes, yeah, Space Hulk. That and that one's a, is literally a turn based game. But it looks like a first person that's one that's another one of those things where people thought it was kinda of like bait and switch on them. Uh huh. It's based on a very popular board game. Oh. Well popular oh. amongst, you know, yeah, nerds. But oh, uh, come on. <laughs> Well, have you heard of it? I have not heard of it. Okay, there you go. So there's a <laughs> there's pl- but there's plenty of you know I know bird you RPGs know, I are de- tabletop games or whatever yes right. go mm-hmm. to go to Nerdist and watch Will Wheaton's you know weekly po- uh, video cast or whatever mm-hmm. um, but uh, and and Space Hulk is a fairly well known brand in that space but it was not amongst the average video game crowd hmm. and it has if you saw the box the box shows these gorgeous visuals which are in the game mm-hmm. but they make it look like a first person shooter and stuff like the Gene Stealers or look just beautiful these full screen mm. monsters yeah and it shows you you know wielding these wonderful weapons and fighting them and again that's all true it's in the game but it's turn based um because it's, it's a strategy game you control like four guys and uh-huh. and you're it's a squad it's kind of like the colonial marines you're going to go out and clear out this uh, space station of aliens right or the genes i think they're called the gene stealers that sounds familiar yeah, yeah. and then but and it's basically go here fire go here you know fire down 
guard this corridor or whatever, and you're trying to corral them into different spots. Mm-hmm. Now, when you get right next to one of these gene stealers, right. it does a really clever thing. They change from a sprite to basically a full motion video. Right. And, and it's very of, transparent. They're kind of wrestling with you. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's like a quick time, before there were quick time events. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you sort of like, you know, parry, dodge, you know, counter attack and all that stuff. And that's what is this thing that's on the back of the box. Uh, and it is actual gameplay, but people's like, wow, look at the graphics. It's like, you know, look at these full 3D models and stuff. It's like, yeah, well, it's basically, it's a fantastic game. I've played mm-hmm. it, but it's a slow, kind of a slow paced game. Hmm. And people just want to run around. It's like, why can't I shoot? Why can't I shoot? You know, it's like, it's turn based. At its heart, it's a turn based game. Mm-hmm. So it, it kind of loses the whole, you know, because it looked like a Doom killer when they saw it, but it doesn't play anything like Doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Slayer. Yeah, Slayer. I just want to see if Deathkeep got poured to anything else. What we got here? Deathkeep. Let's check movie games. All right. The source of all things game. Fair number of things game. Did I leave any uh, treasure back here? No. And it helps if I spell it properly. Um, let's see. There's no B in Deathkeep. Um, Hi there. Oh dear. Death Keep. Uh, they did. Okay, so Death Keep, they did port to Windows. Which was popular amongst the later 3DO games. Like, well, mm-hmm. we can do 3DO, or we can do. And we, maybe we can get this around the PC. There was a whole bunch of like 3DO exclusives that either they. You know, PC was like the best they could do just because mm-hmm. the. That's they all. were doing stuff that was too sophisticated for the other consoles mm-hmm. just because they use the specialized hardware right in the 3do to maximum advantage and mercenary is another one like that uh, I can remember that one that never got forward to anything else um which is sad because that, that was somebody said that's like one of the first examples of cyberspace mm-hmm. grand theft auto style gameplay they say go anywhere at any time and count you could take on the boss you know right right away if you want to you die mm-hmm. right but you know it's like you had to build up your character and then you could go on any mission at any time there was even uh, there was just like I think a couple of weeks ago there was an article in Gamma Sutra about you know sort of like the lost pioneers of mm-hmm. uh, th- those guys and it's like that was a case of they're out in the mid- Midwest and EA threw a bunch of money at them and said make a game for us do what you want <laughs> hmm. very un EA like right oh, well, <laughs> well, since EA you know today yeah very unlike now oh. but uh, well yeah that's one thing I did want to mention so. The box for this, and maybe you can insert a screenshot of the box. Uh, uh, yeah, I, could the box. Manage, I could probably manage that. actually has a photo of the team, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's a development team. Uh, the inside cover of the box um, has most of the development team, not all of them. Some of them weren't available. Basically, um, it said, yeah, so we have the... Because, in fact, that was one of the things that um, trip... That was, that was one of the principles, you might say, that EA was founded on was we want geez how can i introduce this so back in the day you had the atari 2600 and you know these games and you would never know by looking at the box who wrote the games and there are people who spent because writing for the 2600 is hard it's just like this really horrible piece of poop and uh there we go and so trip says i think these guys should get credit and so he one of the things that he came up with was the idea of packing games a little bit like record albums so that the not you know not only is the 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 producer there and the publisher there but you know the artists who created it and so the some of the earliest ea games you know like bill budges you know pinball construction set right uh, stuff like that you know there's a photo of bill budge in there a very young bill budge um there's um yeah, so uh, so they were doing that for a very long time, but it, around the time that uh, we showed up to do this game, they were starting to ramp down on that. And so I think, according to you, I think this was like the last one that well, had one of the last, last one, ones. One of possibly, yeah, probably one of the last ones where they acknowledge the team at least in that. Bo- I mean, games still have credits for on them now. That's like. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, now now it's a giant crawl that yeah. know, rivals or, most Hollywood and Sometimes, production. you know, even early in my career, they were still doing it, like, in the manual. Uh-huh. Back when games actually had manuals. Yes. Uh, there weren't PDF <laughs> files on the disc. Yeah. 
Um, but now you know they're they're doing it to you know oh be eco ecologically friendly. No, you're doing it to save money, but you know. yeah. <laughs> were ecologically friendly when you switch from coloring to black and white ink uh no you were just doing it to save money but um uh, which i have no i have no problem with as long as your credit ends up somewhere on the game I mean, mm. it's not if, it's, if you have to play the game do it even better because most people throw away the manuals and the boxes anyway which is why complete box games are worth so much on ebay mm. but at least if it's on the disc it's you know your credits are with it but yeah i mean putting an actual photo that's the last time i can remember would be monster manor which is weird because okay so ea published the game Yes. But it was developed by... NTG. NTG, before or after acquired by 3DO. Um, bef before it was acquired by 3DO. So. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's a nice little bit of a way to segue into history. Oh, God, it's a puzzle. Ah. Um, so the 3DO console was actually developed by a small company called NTG, New Technologies Group, um, which was founded by R.J. Michael, Dave Needle, and Dave Morse. Uh, RJ was a software guy, Dave Needle was the hardware guy, and Dave Morse was the business guy. Um, if you've heard of these gentlemen before, you, or you may be aware that they together created the Atari Lynx. And prior to that, they all three of them worked at Amiga. So, uh, so they decided, okay, we want to do, so they've, they've come off the Amiga, they've come off the Lynx, and they say, okay, what are we going to do next? And uh, they said, let's make a console. And the 3DO is what they created. So, midway to full, through development, enter Trip Hawkins. And it says, I'd like to sell this. I'd like to... Oh, no, there we go. Uh, you know, I'd like to sell this. I'd like to make this into a platform. Because he had just come off of a bunch of pain and misery with uh, Sega and Nintendo. Because of their business practices. And, you know, how they tre treated their developers. And how much they charged them to publish games. And so it's just like, I want to create a platform that is powerful enough to carry us forward several years into the future, um, but also, oh, hello, uh, but also has uh, reasonable licensing costs. Where did you two come from? And so, haha. Uh, so that's basically where, um, so the, those two guys got together, um, you know, more or less, and, uh, that's how the, uh, 3DO ended up getting made. And the idea was more that it'd be more like a, a VCR or a DVD player. That was, that was part of in the, the sense that, you it know, was everybody manufactured, can... manufactured by multiple hardware companies, you know, Panasonic, uh, Lucky Gold Star, uh, so forth, so that they would all compete on, you know, their ability to drive down costs so that the platform would get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper as the years went on. Uh, but, uh... Yeah. And that, that was actually it a was, decent was, strategy and it would have worked except for you had a company like Sony thrown into the mix who decided we'll do our own but we have mm -hmm. the manufacturing power to sell it at a horrible loss. Yeah. <laughs> Versus like Nintendo never sold anything at a loss. Until very recently, um, because they had to, mm -hmm. um, and you know, you know, their their technology was not cutting edge ever. Mm -hmm. um, no, they were buying; they just could use off the shelf parts or relatively cheap parts. But because they're Nintendo, they you know, they you know, they're very smart to do it that way. That's worked. That worked for them for many a decade mm -hmm. until, like I said, very recently when they said, you know, you're gonna you want people to buy a 3ds, you're gonna have to bite the bullet and sell it at actual cost as opposed to mm. making profit on your hardware so whereas like sony when it entered the market it was sort of like they immediately knew oh no you bastards <laughs> <laughs> you had to be greedy you had to be greedy you, you got Son greedy. Of a... <laughs> i think we could i think people will take our word for it that you actually yeah. completed this level <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah i looked at the exit cheaply. no i'm not going to take the exit i'm going to cheaply and conveniently ask you <laughs> Let's bring up another point about this. I was wondering sure. why you're playing. What good is the score in this game? Um, it gives you extra lives, but that's about it. It gives you extra lives, right? But it's not like we there's definitely, no. We no, definitely wanted a facility for extra lives. There, although there are little beating hearts buy, that show up. You can't up. buy ammo between rounds. You no. can't buy hardware. You can't no. buy. You know, there's no achievement unlocked. I've killed thirty thousand ghosts or mm -hmm. whatever the hell. Mm -hmm. Achievement unlocked. Ding. Now see, now if you'd only innovated that, you could have patented that and made a ton of <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we can talk. We can also talk about other reasons why 3DO failed, but we can save that for the next one. I right? can save that for the next one, which uh-huh. is sort of like you know, I said it's like the the console, you know, besides the high price, which right. is a myth. Uh, because yes, it launched at seven hundred dollars, but it was never more expensive than the PlayStation when both were on the market at the same time. Right. Um, so this idea, everybody always says like, "Well, I couldn't afford seven hundred dollars." Like, yeah, but you went and bought a PlayStation. The three D O was just as cheap, if not cheaper. Mm-hmm. And also the fact that the console was almost too consumer friendly. But we can go in. I can have a little diatribe on that next time. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Make notes. But yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I I have my notes here. <laughs> so. Uh, but this was a nice play session. Like I said, we'll just take our... We'll just take it as read that we finished the map um, <laughs> with about the same score. And uh, it's just like hand wave, hand wave, hand wave. Because uh, uh, somebody got greedy. Somebody got greedy. I remember this map like the back of my hand. And, ah! <laughs> God. Hey, when did this work come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was, there was actually a, in the previous map um, the with all the, the pretty wallpaper, you know, the, the, you know uh, 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 yeah, the, the haunted housey looking thing. Um, unfortunately, the way I was walking through the level, it didn't trigger. But there's a bug in that level where you you're moving towards like the final room, and spiders start crawling out of the wall. This is not supposed to happen. Yeah, but it's a cool uh, effect. It's a cool effect. I mean, it worked. It worked out great because it's like really creepy. Oh my god, they're coming out of the walls. But that was. It was never supposed to be possible for monsters to walk through walls. Yeah. Well, you'll find that any business uh, that is making, uh, you know, new chemical compounds, new special effects, new games, most of your accidents Mm -hmm. usually end up in producing something unintentionally great, you know? Mm -hmm. Some, you know, oops, a misplaced code. It's like, hey, that's kind of cool. That almost looks like that guy is intentionally like. Like he broke his leg or something, or he's, you know, he's got a little twitch or something. That actually gives him some character. Mm-hmm. How did I do that? Okay, how, here's how I fix it, and here's how I make it happen intentionally. You mm-hmm. know? A lot of great stuff. I mean, that's most of early days of special effects is like, let's throw this in front of the lens and see what happens, you know? <laughs> hey, uh, when you mix these two chemicals together, you get a nice blue fireball. I wasn't trying to do that. I burned my eyebrows off, but hey, it looked cool. I'm going to yeah. film it the next time. Some of the greatest scientific achievements discoveries in history are heralded not by eureka but by that's weird this is a polyester how, how that came about or something like that um yeah some guy like threw some milky stuff down the... <laughs> it's like what happened All right. well um so we'll just hand wave over finishing uh, this one and move on to the next level when we see you next time have a pleasant evening yep <laughs>